All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. And today we are gonna be covering the details for Mass Saiyan's Extreme Z Awakening and also the Dokkan Awakenings for Toa, Mira, and Demigra. And honestly, all four of them are really, really good. So uh, why don't we start here with Mass Saiyan first? And I'm actually going to quickly read his pre-Extreme Z Awaken details, and then we'll talk about his EZA, so you guys can compare the two. So before the EZA, his leader skill is all types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 50%. His super attack causes immense damage and lowers attack and defense, and his passive was attack plus 50,000 and defense plus 20,000 when facing two or less enemies. Now obviously you always want percentage boosts over flat boosts, but these were some really significant flat boosts, so uh, he was still able to do some decent damage before the EZA. Now with the Extreme Z Awakening, his leader skill becomes all types key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 80%, super attack, raises attack and defense. I know a lot of people are going to be very excited about this, so infinitely stacking with every single super causes immense damage and lowers attack and defense and his passive is attack and defense plus a hundred percent plus an additional key plus one and attack plus fifty percent when facing two or less enemies and then plus an additional key plus one and attack and defense plus thirty percent when facing only one enemy so for single enemy events which is most events in the game this dude is gonna be a monster man a hundred and eighty percent attack 130% defense to start while stacking attack and defense with every single super and debuffing the enemy's attack and defense with each super as well. And even his leader skill, uh, all types keep plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 80%. Not the best rainbow leader skill, but it's still usable for farming purposes or even battlefield possibly. And of course, his stats get a pretty significant bump too, right? So at rainbow status, he's going to have 17,975 attack, 17,896 HP, and 10,457 defense. So uh, for a non-Dokkan Fest unit, non-Dokkan Fest EZA, he's insane. I'm a huge fan. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about it. But I think they definitely gave Mass Saiyan the uh, respect that he deserved. Okay, so uh, that is Mass Saiyan's EZA. And now let's move on to the Dokkan Awakenings for three units that I honestly thought Bandai had completely forgotten about. Fizmira, Tektoa, and Int Demigra. And we'll start here with the Fizmira first. This is his pre-awakened form, of course. And when I say forgotten, I mean like this dude and Tektoa weren't even available on banners for at least a year, maybe longer. So let's pop over to his Token Awakening, and the art for his Awakening is actually really dope, but unfortunately they're not showing it here, but we'll see it at the end of this video, along with their uh, animations too. Okay, so leader skill for Fizz Mira's Token Awakening is Fizz types key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 90%, super attack, raises attack and defense, causes immense damage, or sorry, uh, supreme damage to enemy, and passive is attack and defense plus 100% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 30% when your team has only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn, and then key plus 1 with each super attack performed up to 3, transforms when conditions are met. Conditions are, you have to be at 60% HP or less starting from the 4th turn from start of battle, and his links are Android Assault, Demonic Power, Tough as Nails, Kamehameha, Fear and Faith, Xenoverse, and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Resurrected Warriors, Androids, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, Artificial Life Forms, Kamehameha, and Power Absorption. And also, his additional 30% attack is calculated separately for a total boost of 160% attack when all conditions are met. Now, after he transforms into Final Form Mira, his super attack raises attack, so no longer stacking defense and causes supreme damage. Passive is attack and defense plus 120% when performing a super attack. Medium chance of launching an additional super attack, which is a, uh, I believe, 25% chance. Yes, 25% chance of launching an additional super attack. And he also gets an additional key plus 3, an attack plus 30% when your team has only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn, plus an additional attack and defense plus 5% per extreme class ally on the team. And since all of his boosts are calculated separately, 
he actually gets a total boost of attack plus 263% and defense plus 197% when all conditions are met, which is insane when you also think about the fact that he's stacking attack with every single super, and before the transformation, he's stacking attack and defense. So really crazy Dokken Awakening here. The only negative is that his attack stat at rainbow status is not super high, 13,500 and 13 but even then if you're running a all extreme class team which obviously you should uh, he's still going to be very very powerful okay so that's mira now let's move on to toa and that's her pre-awakened form and after doken awakening her leader skill will be attack and defense plus 15 percent per key sphere obtained and recovers 1000 hp per key sphere of a character's type gain obviously a bit of a niche leader skill, you're not going to be using her much as a leader. But I do like the fact that, you know, it's different from your average leader skill. Her super attack causes supreme damage and greatly lowers defense and seals super attack. And her passive is all allies key plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 5% for all allies per extreme class ally on the team. So if you're running an all extreme team, then she should be giving key plus 3 and attack and defense plus 35% to all allies. And she also gets attack and defense plus 100% when your team has only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. Links are Demonic Power, Battlefield Diva, Solid Support, Scientist, Fear and Faith, Xenoverse, and Fierce Battle. And our categories are Peppy Gals, Time Travelers, Siblings Bond, and Battle of Wits. So that is the Toa. She does not have a transformation. Uh, obviously a much more... Uh, support focused unit and I'm fine with that. E plus 3 and attack and defense plus 35% makes her one of the best extreme class supports in the game and she's also getting attack and defense plus 100% for some damage output and a little bit of tanking, right? So that is Toa for you. And finally, let's move on to the Int Demigra. Now this guy was actually available on banners up until now, but literally his only purpose was to stun because that was all he could do but now with the token awakening he can do quite a bit more so demigra leader skill is all types key plus three hp attack and defense plus 70 percent super attack supreme damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy and passive is attack and defense plus 120 percent plus an additional attack and defense plus 60 percent when your team has only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn high chance of stunning the attacked enemy and high chance of transforming into giant form when HP is 70% or sorry 60% or less once only. Links are godly power, big bad bosses, brainiacs, revival, fear and faith, xenoverse, and fierce battle. And categories are realm of gods, resurrected warriors, giant form, time travelers, and final trump card. Now we don't have uh, any additional information about his giant form but I'm assuming it's just going to be like a great ape transformation where you're going to be immortal for like one turn, maybe two turns. So that is Demigura for you. Uh, he also has an average chance of 58% to stun the enemy with a super attack when you factor in his passive as well as his chance to stun on the super. Yeah, there you go guys. We just covered all four awakenings, one easy A, three token awakenings. And like I said, man, I'm a big fan of all of them. I think they did a great job with uh, every single one. And the last thing we got to do before we go is uh, check out these arts as well as the uh, animations, right? So this is the uh, Mira. Let me just turn off my webcam real quick. So on the top here, you can see his pre-transform state. And on the bottom here is his final form. And uh, we also have Toa looking really, really nice. And finally, we have... Demigra with his giant form in the background and now we can check out these animations let me just put my face back in and here we go
Damn. That's... That's clean. They look really good. If someone had told me that these were animations for, like, new summonable versions of these units, I wouldn't have been surprised. So, great job, Akatsuki. Great job, Bandai. Uh, details look really good. Animations, card art, everything looks awesome. Mass Saint Easy A looks insane too. But yeah, guys, that's going to be the video. Before you go, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, which of the three Awakenings do you think is the best, or how would you rank them? I would probably go... Demigrun number one, uh, Mira number two, and then Toa number three. I'm not sure actually, because this is just based off my first impressions and I could definitely change my mind within the next couple of hours or days. But regardless, they're all awesome. I'm excited for them. And uh, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out